Tonight, a raging inferno in the city guts retail stores and leads to quick evacuations of nearby businesses. This is a very catastrophic scene happening behind us in which the voyagers, the two voyagers as we knew it, uh, were on fire. More evacuations in the city and a fainting spell by a woman terrified after a bomb threat. And the brother of a shooting victim appeals to St. Lucians to do more to help the police solve the growing crime problem. This is the Hot 7 Nightly News with Lovelies and Amy Jacob. Good night. It is Thursday, the 21st of November. Welcome to the Hot 7 TV Nightly News on Flow Channel 117, also being simulcast on KISS FM Radio. You can also watch via our website, www.caribbeanhottv.com, on our free Caribbean Hot FM mobile app or on our Facebook page. I'm lovely St. Amy Joseph. Thank you for joining us. A fire broke out in the heart of the city on Thursday afternoon. The popular retail store Voyager went up in smoke, triggering mass evacuations of all businesses on the boulevard. Fire officials were in a race against time to get the blaze under control and were dealing with water wars amid the battle against the raging inferno. Hot 7 TV's Jacob Wooding was on the scene as all of this unfolded. We are on site at the Voyager building on the boulevard in Castries where a massive fire has erupted engulfing the entire building in flames. The public is alerted to remain cautious as they take the Castries street city. 2 p.m. Thursday and the boulevard is not in its regular scene of vehicles parked on either side of the road. Persons are currently evacuating and making their way out of the city center to avoid the flames. Officials seem to have their hands filled with this issue. This is a very catastrophic scene happening behind us in which the voyagers, the two voyagers as we knew it, uh, were on fire. One is um, completely destroyed and the other one has recently caught a fire because of the nature of the, the material stored and um, the close proximity of the buildings. We now have two structures on fire. It is um, very difficult. As um, the public knows, we have limited resources when it comes to manpower. However, we have called in all the necessary fire stations, Grosley Fire Station, Babano Fire Station. We even have some members of the Super Fire Station here with us. And we have numerous um, trucks on scene battling this fire, but normally it's a very difficult fire to battle. In such a building, um, fire would spread very quickly in the rafters, through the roof. So in order to deal with a fire of that magnitude, would have had to be some internal firefighting at uh, a time that is convenient to the person in charge of the fire. Well, there is, there are two seawater pumps um, in the city. However, the challenge may be that the, the piping to go along with the sea pumps uh, may not be in the best condition because these, these lines have been underground for a number of years. So, but that kind of infrastructure requires significant finance and, and that is a challenge I know for the fire service. Pedestrians and officials stand by in awe as the historic Getty Theatre in Boulevard Castries goes down in flames. For Hot 7 News, I am Jaco. Thank you very much, Jaco. Meanwhile, our news team stumbled across more chaos as they were leaving the scene of the fire. Let's join Jaco Wooding again. As we made our way through the crowds heading back up to the station, we noticed that there was more chaos than the fire in the city today. Two fights seemed to have broken out between teenagers, yes, school children, who were part of the crowd and police officers. Our cameraman, who is very fit and up to the challenge, kept up with the proceedings. Witness reports say that the assailant is a well-known troublemaker who is a student of the Patricia James Secondary School. The fight seems to have broken out when he refused to take directions from a police officer who was trying to control the crowd, seeing that he landed the first blow, erupting into a fit of violence. The second fight is said to have broken out when a friend of the assailant picked up his school bag and made his way through the city, escaping police officers. Both assailants have been arrested and taken to the central police station. For Hot 7 News, I am Jacques Wooding. 
The brother of shooting victim Victor Morris gives an update on his brother's condition and appeals to St. Lucians to do more to help the police solve the growing crime problem. Solaj Alfred reports. Shooting victim Victor Maurice's brother, Quigley Maurice, updates the Hot 7 team on his brother's condition. Victor Maurice is a former school teacher and a former town clerk of the Castries Constituency Council and a current councillor. He was gunned down on Sunday, November 4th at his home in Balata Babono. Maurice says the uphill battle facing his family is one which he has to remain positive about for the sake of his brother. One time things are very bad, one thing is stable. Right now, he's not out of the woods yet. Things are not very pretty, but we are taking anything that is hopeful, anything that is positive. Maurice says the family remains in a state of bewilderment as to the exact reason Victor Maurice was targeted. That is the same thing that baffles the police, baffles us, baffles everybody. We do not know our brother have any kind of um, enemy per se. And the, when you check the scene of the crime, there is no evidence that he was going to be robbed because the person came on him and just fired and then turned it back and walked away. So we don't know. We, 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 nobody knows. Maurice says the family continues to liaise with law enforcement in order to get to the bottom of the matter. I just had a meeting this morning with the commissioner and I, I must say that the police is working very hard and um, we are not even sure what amount of grounds they are covering, but they are working very hard. I want what you see happening today is because the community have choose to remain quiet. And all bad people need to flourish is for good people to remain silent. So 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 that is where we are and, and that is what we are crying for, that people come forward. Come forward. Maurice describes his brother Victor as a hard-working individual and urges members of the public who may have information about the shooting to contact the nearest police station. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Sola Alfred. Gunshots rang out in Castries on Wednesday night. A young man identified as Miguel St. Rosa Bacatel was shot at four times. In a video post sent to social media, the young man can be seen trying to solicit a ride to the hospital. The individual behind the camera claims that his friend was shot at by men of Tuj. Law enforcement officials believe the matter is gang-related. An investigation is underway. The incident raises further concerns about increases in gun crimes and intensifies calls for tougher penalties for illegal gun possession and gun-related crimes. The leader of the opposition, Philip J. Pierre, is asking St. Lucians to dig deeper and analyze their personal actions to determine the root cause of the growing crime problem in St. Lucia. He says the answers lie within our very own personal attitudes. Solange Alfred reports. Opposition leader Philip J. Pierre says out-of-the-box thinking is needed to address the current crime wave gripping the nation. Pierre says talks of implementing a holistic approach to tackling crime is merely scratching the surface. Rather, he notes the need to dig deeper to bring about a better understanding of the role we all play in crime reduction. I think we must go to um, a deeper a, a, a deeper introspection as to why has the country become so lawless. And that, that may come from whether people, we have to ask ourselves, whether people respect institutions, where, whether the mode of discourse is, is not, is too abrasive, and it's, it's, it's not a matter of give and take, whether the dissenting view is accepted as part of what should happen. Whether if you disagree, you're not ostracized and you're not put in a corner and you're not, you're not, revenge is not taken. And in, in, in the whole concept of revenge, whether institutions are, are not are not built to take revenge on people that they think are, are against them. The opposition leader goes on to say the actions of criminals can be compared to the actions of varying members of society. He calls on every citizen to do the right thing moving forward. Like a guy who walks into a gas station and says to me, give me that. If not, I will shoot you, I'll burn you. Now, <laughs> you have to juxtaposition that against certain things in, in the society. So it's, I think the whole society has got to go in deep introspection 
and we have to call uh, 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 we have to call not only a truce but we have to call a halt to all our actions whether the actions of the people who matter are right. Pierre says a clear observation needs to be made as to what is occurring in society that is empowering and propelling criminal elements to rise up in arms. Now I see people are talking about people using all kind of examples trying to bring Christianity and God into it and things. So these are noble efforts, but I think the people who see these things must go deeper and look at what's happening in the society that has caused this this upsurge in crime. The unprecedented increase in criminal elements moving deeper into the Christmas season has left many implementing as many measures as possible to ensure safety and security are at an all-time high to combat the climbing crime. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Solaj Alfred. Thank you, Solaj. This is the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. Still to come, real-life consequences to telephone pranks. A woman faints after a bomb scare. The District 3 Education Officer says so far so good for Entrepo Secondary. And Dominica's Opposition Leader warns CARICOM governments to stay out of the country's internal affairs as protests grip the nation. That and more when we return.